Hey guys, Dion Taylor here. I'm writing a series of articles and recording a series of videos about 2021 Release Wave 2. In this episode, I'm going to discuss the new features and functionality for Dynamics 365 Field Service. Sit right back and enjoy. I'm going to start with some of the features that have been added to the schedule board and we already had some of those features on the legacy schedule board but these have now been added to the new schedule board in dynamics 365 field service so the first thing i wanted to mention is the ability to now add tabs to the schedule board right so that you can add new schedule boards directly from the new schedule board the other thing that I actually kind of missed was the ability to move bookings. There's actually going to be a button there that is, like I said before, in a legacy schedule board, but it's now also available in the new schedule board. And then you can just select a time frame, the different statuses for any of the bookings that you want to move, and then you can just go ahead and do that. The details pane is now also available in a new schedule board and so is the booking alerts pane. And then we used to have like an, a little bit of an eye icon on there. So that's gone, but that allowed us to toggle back and forth between right, the schedule board what, that you're seeing on the slide right now and a list view. So we have a new button for that. And you can see that on there, it says Gantt on there, which is the regular schedule board view. And you can switch that back to a list view as well. And at the time that I'm recording this video, the scheduling of resource groups and crews and pools and multi-day work orders is currently not working in my early access environment, but I confirmed with Microsoft that this is definitely coming in this release. This is also coming to early access. It's just gonna be in the update that's rolling out over the next couple of days. So another feature that I really, really missed is the scheduling assistant. So now we're gonna be able to use the scheduling assistant directly from the new schedule board. And as you can see here on the screen, we also now have the schedule board settings available in the new schedule board as well, right? So you can make some changes there. You can see that on my screenshot. And if you scroll down a little bit further, um, you can click on a link which allows you to access even more of those settings. And the schedule board will also be more open to customizations. We now have the ability to extend the functionality in the hourly view via different client-side extensions, such as scripts and style sheets, localization, et cetera. So I'm not a developer, so I don't know exactly how this is done, but it's, it's nice to be able to, to know that this is possible. Now, another way to customize a schedule board is to display custom fields from the work order or requirement on the booking or booking alert that is displayed on the hourly view of the new schedule board. And these custom fields can also be displayed as a filter on the schedule board and taken into consideration when finding the best resources. And lastly, we can now create our own JavaScript, which can be executed before the creation or at an update of a booking record on the hourly view of the new schedule board. So let's go ahead and take a look at the new schedule board. Let me just go ahead and pull up my environment here. And you can see here, this is that new schedule board, right? This is what I was talking about earlier. You have the ability to just create a new schedule board tabs directly from here. If you want to access the settings that I just referred to, you can see the little gear icon over here. So I can click on that. And as you can see, now I can change my time zone, my working time, right? That's that time frame that's showing on the schedule board, my time resolution, my row height, whether or not I want to show canceled bookings, if I want to turn on the territory filter and show the travel duration. 
And then if you click here, all board settings, you can see that now I have access to all of those other things as well. Scheduling assistant, right? What do I want to show? All of that is now available directly in the new schedule board. So like I said earlier, there was like this eye icon here on the side, I believe that is now gone that allowed us to switch to a list view. So that's what this is. This is now allowing me to right switch to a list view. I can expand that for each resource. And if I need to go back here, I just click on Gantt and that just brings back, oops, let me just, where did I go? Here we go. That just brings you back to the schedule board view that we're all used to. And then of course we have here the, if you click here, we have here the booking alerts, right? They will show up in here. And then we also have, oops, let me actually click here on my details view, right? If I click here on the work order, that should now show those details directly here in my details pane. And lastly, right, the scheduling assistant. So let me see if I have any unscheduled work orders. I can just go ahead and highlight one of those work orders and you can see that I can now click on find availability. Now what this does is it actually, you can see that all of those different views I have here, as soon as I select a work order, those are gone, right? But you just need to uncheck that and then you'll get your panes, those different views back. And then I can click on find availability Let's just hope that I actually have somebody for this. And as you can see, now I can go ahead and schedule my work order from the new schedule board. So another great new feature is the ability to change the field on the bookings control and that's on the field service mobile app. So by default, the fields that are showing are accounts, address, incident type, and booking status, and then duration and start time. But you can add up to three additional fields. So you can kind of see this on the screenshot, right? I have work order number is added, and you can also see here that the priority, if you look at the right or the left screenshot, the priority has been added to this as well. Now we also now have the ability to set work hours through an API, which is really nice, right? Previously we had to go in there, each an individual work order, or we can just set the calendar for multiple work orders. But now you can do this programmatically by this API. And I talked about this in my previous video. This is actually functionality that's going to be available throughout the application, right? So in sales, customer service, field service, etc. So you can turn this functionality on by navigating to app settings in the sales hub, and then you can click on chat and collaboration. And besides turning on the embedded experience, there are some additional settings that can be turned on from here as well. So this feature embeds the Teams application directly into Dynamics 365, as you can see on the screenshot. And then you can click on that chat icon on the top of the screen, which you can't really see right now, but there's going to be this little bubble icon and you can click on that and that will actually bring up that Teams pane. And when the Teams pane is opened, while you have a record open, then users are going to be able to see, first of all, their recent chats, but also the chat that is actually linked to that specific record. So you can see that in here, that mineral buildup in water supply, that's actually a chat that's linked to this particular record, which is the case. Now, unfortunately, this particular feature, which is that new customer experience homepage is not an early access. So I wasn't able to test this or to check out what it looks like. So I figured, let me just put a screenshot on there from the self scheduling portal that we already have, right? Cause this is again, a new portal experience built on power app portals, which can be accessed online by your customers. Now, of course, only customers who are invited to the experience by the service organization can access that portal after they register. And then your customers are going to be able to use this new customer experience homepage 
to track the status of a technician, right? That's that track my tech functionality that came out in preview a while back. They can review their service history and they can schedule a visit. And that's really that self-scheduling feature that went for public preview back in April. Now, there's been some minor changes to the work order forms. So in order to simplify the time commitments on a work order, the date window start and date window end fields are going to be hidden by default. So users can work with the time from and the time to fields going forward. So prior to this release, when a work order was set to complete, while there were related bookings that had not yet been completed, an error message was shown to the user. Now in the new release, the end user is gonna see a pop-up window that gives them some, some more details, right, on why this action cannot be completed. And it also allows them to cancel or complete any associated bookings. And then they can change that work order status to complete. Now, we also have some functional location and asset tree improvements. So I don't know about you, but I was actually a very big fan when Microsoft rolled out the functional locations in 2020 release wave two. And if you're not up to speed, functional locations actually allows users to build out a hierarchy of physical spaces at a customer location without having to use the account table. Now we already had the ability to search through the hierarchy of functional locations, but if you did not check the show assets box, then you needed to click search again. So this has changed. If you now check that show assets box, that will automatically relaunch the search. And you'll also notice that below the search box, it's now showing the number of matches the system has found for your query. And lastly, you'll immediately see the match because it's now colored in yellow, as you can see in my screenshot. And then lastly, you see that plus and that minus button below the matches found area. And these can be used to either collapse or expand multiple sections at once. So I, I really love these updates. So let's take a look in my environment over here. So here we are in assets and locations. And if I want to very quickly expand some of this stuff here, I can just click on that a couple of times and then you can see everything is expanded. If I now click on minus, collapse all, boom, it collapses everything very quickly for me. And then if I go ahead and I search, I'm going to say HVAC, right? You can see there's no matches found. If I now click on show assets, it immediately searches again and it found two and you can see both of them are highlighted in yellow. So I can immediately see uh, the assets that I was looking for because of that coloring. Now, you probably all know about the new field service Get Started Hub, which was introduced to us in 2021 release wave one. Well, this feature adds some new functionality to the Get Started Hub and field service. The new feature spotlight is something that is not an early access. So unfortunately I can't show you that, but it is currently scheduled for GA in October of 2021. So this feature is updating the spotlight at the top of the get started hub where new features are introduced accompanied by documentation and videos that you can access to learn more about those features. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Also don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another video again. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day everybody.